the astrological configuration on 9-11, with Saturn, planet of structure and materialistic power in the sign of Gemini the Twins, gives us a direct as above, so below reflection, as does Pluto, planet of transformation through destruction, in the sign of Sagittarius, religion, foreign cultures and long distance travel, symbolic of the alleged hijackers and their religiously inspired plot to destroy the structural center of materialistic power in New York, thereby transforming the country of America and the world in one fell swoop. With such an impressive as above so below correlation on that day, we ask the question, do you believe in magic? Are these five direct correlations between Saturn and the World Trade Center complex coincidence? Astrological synchronicity? Or are they the result of a little influence by a hidden helping hand? So what of Pluto and its role in the astrological configuration on 9-11? Well, Pluto, astrologically, and its planetary influences are said to govern deep transformation. Pluto also brings past tensions back to the surface, and Pluto also rules all things secretive. Astrological Pluto gives us direct as above so below correlations with deep transformations occurring on all levels at the World Trade Center, New York, America and indeed the world. The long-standing Muslim-Christian tensions were brought back to the surface on a massive scale and the terrorist organization Al-Qaeda and its alleged secret plot was laid open for all to see. And Pluto, in Sagittarius, the sign of religion, ties all these aspects together with remarkable accuracy. Can events of a celestial nature really so closely mirror those on the ground below? Or is some other force secretly at work? Given that Pluto postdates the origins of ancient astrology and the earlier practices of occult magic, and in the interest of impartial, factual truth seeking, I find it necessary at this point to explore the history of the recently discovered and recently demoted celestial body, Pluto. The story begins at Lowell Observatory in the USA, where Percival Lowell began searching for his Planet X in 1906. After his death in 1916, his work was continued by Clyde Tombaugh, who, after studying photographic plates of space, discovered the elusive ninth planet, and on March 13, 1930, he announced his discovery in a telegram to Harvard Observatory. The story regarding the eventual naming of the planet begins the very next day in Oxford, England, where a certain falconer Madden sits for breakfast with his granddaughter, reading about the as yet unnamed discovery in the Sunday Times. Madden asks his granddaughter for a suitable name, and Venetia, who just happens to have read a book about mythological gods, suggests the name Pluto. Madden, so enthralled by the suggestion, runs off to tell his friend Herbert Hall Turner, who just happens to be an astronomer royal. He then telegrams Lowell Observatory, who unanimously decide to accept the suggested name in May 1930. This seemingly non-occultic story takes a bizarre turn when we discover that there was another Saturn-Pluto opposition in 1930, the very essence of this series. Just as surprising is the curious coincidence that Falconer Madden's brother, Henry Madden, is also responsible for naming celestial bodies Mars's moons. And according to Venetia herself, she played no other role in the story than merely saying at some point the word Pluto. In her own words, she admits she remembers very little about the conversation and that the actual naming of Pluto was entirely Madden's work. And strangely, like the Madden brothers, Pluto and Mars are astrologically linked. 
Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. Staggering then to find them both linked to two brothers who played key roles in the naming of two astrologically linked celestial bodies. Is this merely coincidental history? More as above, so below wonderment? Or is there something else at work behind the scenes? Madden was head of the Bodleian Library in Oxford. The Bodleian Library is named after its founder, Sir Thomas Bodley, Freemasonic member of the Brotherhood Fratelli Obscuri and cousin of Sir Francis Bacon, the grandfather of modern Freemasonry. Bodleian Library also includes Rhodes House, named in honour of gold and diamond magnate and master mason Cecil Rhodes, who conspiratorially initiated the Round Table Group at Oxford, hub of many still largely secret organisations, which include the Club of Rome, the Bilderberg Group and the Council of Foreign Relations, headed by a certain David Rockefeller. This brings us right back full circle to 9-11 and Dick Cheney, Vice President of America on that fateful day. It's good to be back at the Council on Foreign Relations. As uh, Pete mentioned, I've been a member for a long time and was actually a director for some period of time. I never mentioned that when I was campaigning for re-election back home in Wyoming. Is the story of the naming of Pluto by a little girl and her grandfather who just happened to be best friends with an astronomer royal and whose brother just so happened to name the moons of Mars as believable as it may or may not seem? Does the story City of Origin, with its long tradition of master masons and secret organisations, give us justifiable cause to reevaluate the story's credibility? Why decide on the name Pluto, and not one of the many other suggestions, one of which came from the astronomer's own widow? Does the answer lie in mythology? The mythological god Pluto is a direct Roman replica of the Greek god Hades, god of the underworld. Hades is Greek for unseen, and Pluto comes from Pluton, a Greek word which relates to the word wealth. Hades and Pluto are mythologically the same unseen god of wealth, a status not dissimilar to a secret society. Pluto remains unseen because of his mythical cap of invisibility, and Grand Master Mason Sir Francis Bacon wrote in his collected essays, for the helmet of Pluto which maketh the politic man go invisible is secrecy in the council. To the Greeks, Hades thrived on the misery of mankind, and as Sophocles wrote of Hades, he is enriched by our sighs and tears. With this in mind, consider Bush's key 9-11 speech about the alleged hijackers. Behind them is a cult of evil, which seeks to harm the innocent and thrives on human suffering. Theirs is the worst kind of cruelty. The cruelty that is fed, not weakened, by tears. Perhaps Bush's speechwriters are simply adept astrologers. Or was it an unconscious mythological reference to Al-Qaeda? Or is Bush referring to something far more sinister indeed? Was the planet Pluto named after the unseen god of wealth who is enriched by human pain and whose cap makes the man of politics invisible to act as a reference for something still largely unseen? Is it merely coincidence that these two entities should be established on the same day of the year? Is it coincidence that the planet and the god will be forever linked with images of virginity? And was the cap of invisibility once again placed upon Pluto in 2006 to prevent the would-be seeker from believing in magic at all? Do you believe in magic? <laughs>